In any video game, you're bound to meet some interesting characters, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is no exception. Hi, I'm Alpha Lance with the Leaderboard, and today we're going to cover the kinds of players you meet in a match of Siege. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. The true recruit. No, I'm not talking about recruit mains here because they can be surprisingly deadly. I am talking about the brand new players. Their teammates and enemies that make you realize there was a sale on Rainbow Six Siege recently. These are the players who run around in their noisy boots giving away their position. They don't lean around corners but rather walk down hallways hoping to run and gun and you might hear someone ask how to heal their character after a firefight. Every player has to start somewhere but might we suggest in the situations? Seriously, if you're level one that means you you haven't even gone through the CQC basics yet. Take pity on these players. They're new, and for this game to grow, we need people to join the ranks. If a new player has a terrible experience, they're less likely to come back. That being said, give them an inch, not a mile. Points are points, and we all took our lumps starting out. We've learned, and so has our next player, the Starter Pack. With the latest version of Rainbow Six Siege giving players all base operators to start, except for those who bought the Trap Edition, it's a little harder to spot new players. They could be hiding among your very own team. Teammates. But the starter pack player can be spotted two ways, by the lack of cosmetics on their operators or by the single cosmetic they put on all their operators, which most likely is the Rhino weapon skin. These players have gone through the gauntlet, maybe watched some online tutorials and are starting to learn. They can recognize operators and what their abilities are, but are still likely to get lost on a map. Maybe they've even noticed that they have a compass on their HUD. They know callouts, but they can't seem to remember them when they need them. You'll see a friendly go down in the kill feed followed by, oh, Oh, Ash in the um, she's in uh, the one the one room with the um, it's got the big table in it. It's to the east of the objective. They're learning, but unlike the recruits, I give you full permission to kill them and tell them what they did wrong. The bug has already rooted itself. These players are here to stay and they want to get better. And in Siege, you have to constantly be learning, which might be ironic for our next player, the time capsule. What? year is it? With a constant barrage on our senses and our free time, many players will head to greener pastures and play the hot new thing that's come out. And that's fine because it's always really funny when they come back. These folks might even be early adopters, having known about the game long before most of us. They just waited for the game's content to grow before returning. These might be high level players who may have their favorite operators decked out in cosmetics, but will constantly fall for new operator tricks. You might hear things in comms or re the lines of chat like, what's this countdown at the top of my screen and why is the house being assaulted by dubstep? Or what do you mean my phone's going off in the middle of a firefight? Or wait, where's my ACOG scope? These players have the time and knowledge that comes back like riding a bicycle, but hopefully you can spot them before the rust falls off. The hair. Whether on offense or defense, you can find someone whose middle name is Speed. Whether they know the enemy didn't have time to place all their traps or they just found out Bay's parents left them home early, these players can be seen trying to make this match go as fast as possible. On offense, these are your rushers, the operators who focus on speed and confusion to break into enemy fortifications knowing the enemy isn't expecting such flair. Offensive bunnies will use three speed operators and often be a part of first blood, whether that be that they earn first blood or that they are first blood. But sometimes they catch the enemy with their pants down and pull off the sickest highlights you'll ever see that'll have you laughing all the way to house. On defense, these are your spawn peekers. The defensive rabbit players who learn the right angles to take you out before you get to do anything. Hell, sometimes one speedy boy can bring your team to a 2v5 before you even enter the house. They should really slow down like our next operator. The tortoise. Slow and steady wins the race. A cool head can keep you alive while the enemy starts to get twitchy off adrenaline. Though this can also lead to teammates that move slower than their teammates have patience for, and sometimes moving slower than is necessary to beat the clock. I mean, I guess not dying is an accomplishment in and of itself, but a loss is still a loss even if your KDA is improving. On offense, these are your shield mains who turtle up and check every corner. Your Montañas, Lions, and Ashes. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just wanted to check if you're paying attention. The offensive turtles are the operators who check for traps, maybe go around the long way, or at least check to make sure that the door is clear before proceeding. Likely holding the diffuser, these operators know that while they don't have the clock on their side, they know it's not a race either. On defense, these are your anchors, your tanks, and most likely your rooks. When the action starts 
afterwards, someone has to watch the hostage to make sure he doesn't realize he can just take the duct tape off his mouth whenever he pleases. These defensive turtles make use of all those reinforcements you took so long to put up and stays on the point, while their teammates do other important tasks throughout the building, or so they hope. The Tourist Roaming defenders can be a very viable strategy. The enemy knows where the objective is, so you know where they're headed, but they don't know where you are. The tourist's dream is to find the enemy team with all their backs exposed while they have all the cover they're going to need. But while searching for the enemy team, the round ends without a single shot being fired. Tourists can be new players who get lost in maps that they think they know well enough just because they really wanted to be Cavier. But they can also be more experienced players who lose track of time or who on their team is left alive and let the enemy just cap the objective. But tourists aren't exclusive to defenders. Attacking tourists can be players going for the flanking routes that are so far off that you'd swear they're just getting ready for the next round. These are the kind of players that'll have you scratching your head wondering how on earth they are this level. Although you'll catch yourself saying that plenty when you find the Smurf. Similar to the newbies we mentioned before, these players will make you keenly aware that a sale must have happened recently. You'll start the match and while waiting for your teammate's McDonald's Wi-Fi connection to load, take a gander at player levels. Somewhere on the roster, you spot a player that's only level 13 and you'll be right to assume that you'll be seeing them at the bottom of the scoreboard, most of the time, that is. As the match progresses, you'll realize this isn't a new recruit. Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. They may say they're just lucky or that they've been playing a lot of similar games, but there's no way that's true. They show all the outward signs of being the true recruit or the starter pack, but they know their callouts. They know the map, and they're pulling off headshots with just enough human error that you know it's skills and not hacks. They may end up on your team and surprise you, but they're just as likely to be against you. And while Smurfs may be frustrating, they're harmless, sorta. Game publishers can't punish someone for playing well on a new account, and soon enough, the game will put them with players who are more on par with their skill levels. High-level players will often put on the smurf costume to let loose and have fun. It's the players who use their skills but don't like fun that you need to watch out for. The tryhard. You've probably faced these kinds of players in other games before, but the tactical nature of Rainbow Six Siege, and really most Tom Clancy games, brings out those who see a match as a chess game. It's a collection of pieces in constant rotation and balance as they try to counter each other to tip the scales in their favor. Except when reality comes knocking to remind these players that unlike chess, they aren't in charge of every piece on the board, and they slam the door rather than listen. The tryhard can be found in casual, but will yell at you for not treating it like a ranked match, or act like you're messing up his audition for the pro league. They can be slow attackers reprimanding you for running in, or rushers who got upset that their entire team didn't follow through with the plan he quickly, offhandedly mentioned between rounds. The tryhard will make you believe they had a plan in mind, a foolproof plan that cannot possibly fail. Therefore, when an inevitably does fail, the fault will fall far from the tree in their mind. Tactics are good to have, and strategies, callouts, and suggestions are all good, but you have to have fun. It is a game after all, and when a player swings too far the other way is when you meet our next teammate, the blowhard. This is the player that is all too aware you're in casual, and will yell at you for yelling at them, and they'll call you a tryhard. The blowhard's the player that will deflect any criticism back at you and saying stuff like, chill out, it's not ranked, you tryhard. And while this is true, they're just gaslighting you because their meme strat they saw on YouTube didn't work. Sometimes a blowhard will try to cover their behavior by swearing they're a smurf, that if this was their real account, they would spin circles around you. You have no way to know for sure, but it's safe to assume that's a load of BS. While primarily an attitude, you can spot a blowhard before the match even starts by their excessive use of memes to boost team morale, typically not followed up with very good gameplay. Often these players have found the best way to have fun is not to be good, but just to prop themselves up as better than you. The Whales. Then there are the Whales, the players who found another way to feel superior to their peers by outdressing them. They put their own elite soldiers in dapper hats and World War I uniforms. Possibly the easiest to identify, the Whales have pumped their, sometimes, hard-earned cash into the store in exchange for R6 credits. Limited event skins, legendary charms, and colors you hadn't seen before are all clues to these players' income. Luckily for us, at least Ubisoft made it so Whales and Rainbow Six Siege can only get 
cosmetic items. But other games are obviously not so lucky. Believe it or not, whales are actually rather good for the game as a whole too. Money going into the game even after purchasing the game is what tells Ubisoft to pour resources into it. Whales burn that excess weight and their fat keeps the servers up and running. And in Siege's case, all they ask in return is just to look really badass and pretty. And in the end, isn't that what we all want? And there you have it, those are your 10 players you meet in Rainbow Six Siege. Who do you feel you come across the most? Did we miss any players you frequently find? Tell us more in the comments below. Once again, I'm your host, Alpha Lance, and if you aren't already, be sure to hit that bell icon to become part of the notification squad. That is, of course, only if you're subscribed to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts. 